If you're not an audio engineer, understanding how to use a wireless microphone with your video camera can be puzzling. If you're unsure how to get the audio from a wireless mic to your editing software, keep watching. I'll explain and show you how. Hi, I'm Tosh Lubeck from DIYVideoStudio.com, where we help you use video to work smarter. Using a radio mic as part of your video production workflow can be a huge benefit. You can record good quality audio with your video without being tied to your camera. You can move away from the camera, maybe even 50 or 100 meters away, and your audio will still sound clear. And whether you're vlogging, demonstrating a product or teaching a yoga class, you'll have the freedom to move about completely hands-free whilst talking. So how does wireless mic audio work? Where is it recorded? And how do you get it onto your computer to edit? When you use a wireless microphone system in video production, what basically happens is a microphone captures the sound of your voice, turns it into an electric signal, then a radio transmitter broadcasts it. The next step happens over at the wireless receiver. It picks up the radio signal, extracts and decodes the audio. Then using a wire connection, the audio signal gets past your recording device, which in this case is a camera. But it could be a digital audio recorder or even a laptop. But by connecting the wireless receiver to your camera, the audio gets saved along with the video to a single file on your camera's memory card, which simplifies the editing because you don't have to sync video and audio. But if you save the sound to a digital audio recorder, maybe because your camera doesn't have an audio input, then you'll need to sync your audio and your video before you can start editing your footage. But let's assume that the receiver's audio output is connected to a camera. So the next step is to transfer the media file to your computer. Once the audio is on your computer, the final stage is to import the media file into your editor. You can then start editing your video project. I know that's a quick overview, so let's take a closer look at each of those elements. It all starts with a microphone. It can be a handheld microphone, a lavalier microphone, or even a headset mic. What is important to know is the pickup pattern of the microphone, because that affects the way you use the mic. I can demonstrate the difference between the two main pickup patterns by using a Blue Yeti microphone, because it can switch between different pickup patterns. And by rotating the Yeti, that's effectively the same as me moving around the microphone. With an omnidirectional pickup pattern, provided I stay the same distance from the mic, the volume of my voice should be the same from whichever direction I speak into the microphone. So if I turn the microphone, I'm now speaking directly into it, into the front. I'm now speaking into the side. I'm speaking into the rear of the microphone. And as I turn it around, there shouldn't be any difference in the level of my voice. Most lavalier mics are omnidirectional. So knowing they pick up sound equally from all directions, that means I can fix a lavalier anywhere around my chest and it should pick up my voice clearly. I just need to make sure that the distance from my mouth to the lavalier is about 10 inches. Of course, if I turn my head off to the side, my voice level will go down because I'm not speaking directly in the direction of the microphone. That's when you need a headset because the mic capsule, this bit here, it stays in the same place relatively to your mouth, whichever direction you turn your head. The other common pickup pattern is cardioid. This is where the mic is most sensitive from the front and almost as sensitive uh, off to the sides, but not from the rear. I'll switch the Blue Yeti to the cardioid pattern and I should sound loudest from the front and pretty good from the sides. But as I get further and round to the rear, 
the voice should be much lower and less distinct. But as I move it back through the side and then get round to the front of the microphone, my voice should actually sound much louder than from the rear. Most performance handheld wireless mics have cardioid patterns. This makes them useful on stage where they can reject sound from loudspeakers and so avoid creating that feedback noise. They can also be useful in videos where you're in a noisy environment. The mic will mainly pick up sound from your voice and minimize the background noise. Whichever mic you're using, the basic principle is the same. The closer it is to your mouth, the clearer the sound will be. A lavalier is normally worn about 8 to 10 inches from your mouth. A vocal handheld mic, however, is about 3 to 6 inches away, but a handheld interview mic would be a little further away, a bit more like a lavalier mic. In general, you don't want a mic to be further than about a foot away from your mouth. With the sound converted into an electrical signal, the transmitter is the next stage. On a handheld wireless microphone, the transmitter is housed inside the microphone body, but wireless lavalier and headset mics are connected to a body pack transmitter that's normally clipped onto a belt or slipped into a pocket. A slightly different type is the Rode Wireless Go. It's a tiny mic and transmitter combined and worn on your clothes. However, it also has a 3.5mm input, so you could plug in a standard wired lavalier mic and pop the Wireless Go in a pocket or under your clothes. Whatever type of transmitter you use, it takes the audio signal from the mic and broadcasts it. The transmitter normally uses a frequency band in the UHF spectrum. Many new wireless kits, like the Rode wireless mics, they operate in the 2.4 GHz part of the radio spectrum that is license-free around the world. With this kit, you won't have to worry about the frequency or channel that's used. It automatically switches channels to find the best frequency to avoid interference. If you're using a system outside of that 2.4 GHz band, whether it's a free, unlicensed or licensed band, you may need to change the channel. That's especially true if you're using more than one wireless microphone. On a handheld mic or a transmitter body pack, you'll have buttons or dials to select the channel. They could have buttons that go through the available channels, and a set button to finally choose the channel to use. Alternatively, there could be a small channel selector dial that you turn to select the channel you want. A quick word about frequencies. The receiver must be set to the same frequency or channel as the transmitter. That might happen automatically, but if you need to select it yourself, you can do that the same way as you do on the transmitter. Use the channel selector buttons or dial to match the frequency used by the transmitter. A word of warning if you're using two wireless mics at the same time. You can't have two wireless mics on the same channel at the same time. They'll cause interference and you won't get any usable audio. But let's get back to the wireless setup. Once transmitted, the radio signal needs to be picked up at the place where you need to record it, and that's what the wireless receiver is for. If you're always filming in a permanent or semi-permanent location, like a theatre, church or studio, you could choose a wireless microphone kit with a desktop receiver. But for corporate videos, filming news stories, or YouTube videos, get an on-camera setup or a belt pack. In this type of kit, your receiver will be about the same size as the body pack transmitter. The advantage of this setup is that both the presenter and the camera are free to move. Also, because the receiver is connected to the camera, the video and audio will be saved to the camera's memory card as one file. Now that the audio and video are saved to a single file on the camera's memory card, you need to transfer it to a computer for editing. You can do that by either connecting the camera and computer using a USB cable, or by inserting the camera's memory card into the computer's card reader. 
Once the file is on the computer's SSD or hard drive, it can be imported into your favorite editing software. And then add it to your editing timeline. If your camera doesn't have an audio in socket, you can connect your wireless microphone receiver to a digital audio recorder. You can then transfer the audio to your computer. All that's left to do is to import the audio into the video project and sync the audio with the video file. So that's how to get the audio from a wireless mic to your editing software. I hope it helps you with your own video projects. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Remember to ring the notification bell so you'll hear when I upload more videos just like this one. Until then, you can visit DIYvideostudio.com for more of my video-related content. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.